Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. This is Get In Tune in June, segment three, the video number three, and we are going to talk about um, what's floating around the internet right now. I have some questions. There's a Minnesota, um, I guess a statement that was written by Robert Sylvester Kelly, a five page letter, and it was written to um, the Minnesota uh, courts stating that, you know, he's going to have to represent himself. Attorney Jennifer Bonjean is not actually going to be uh, representing him in that area of his case because that's what that's not what she was hired to do. So my question is, how did this notarized, which it should have been notarized statement, get on the internet. Um, let me see here. Something's going on. Okay. How did this information get on the internet? How? So I, I, I want to talk briefly about some of the laws that we need to really follow um, when we're online. And I understand everybody is super emotional and I know everyone's doing it for the benefit and for the blessing of Robert Sylvester Kelly. But here's the situation. Can we make it better for him um, by posting things that are way out there? Because those people that are following his footsteps to devour what he's trying to bring forth knows his every move, you know? And I understand that we're all trying to get, you know, um, information out so other people will know what's really going on. Like we're trying to protect him in any, and by any and all means necessary. However, the question is, are we doing it for the betterment of Robert Sylvester Kelly? So let's get into the topic tonight. Um, and I'm going to be reading from the American Bar Association. I believe that that's a great research tool to validate what can happen during a client attorney privileged communication and why, you know, maybe Jennifer Bonjean had to shut down certain things so that she will not be looked at as being infiltrated um, by even those good doers that want to just really and truly help. Um, so I did some research here. And according to Google, the American Bar Association is a committee consisting of two members from the Ninth Judicial Circuit, one member from each of the other federal judicial circuits and the chair of the committee. It was founded in 1878 and um, Reg Reginald Turner has been the president since August 10th, 2021. Their headquarters is at 321 North Clark Street, Chicago, Illinois. So we know who runs the Bar Association. Now, I want to share that we are creating yet another situation surrounding the time of sentencing and the Illinois trial. Remember how it all went down when the public was able to listen in on the conference call, okay? So now we have another situation coming up and it is the gifting of donations and charitable contributions to, um, I guess, Jennifer Bonjean for showing the love that she's giving to Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. But we have to remember Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly in this situation, according to the criminal justice system, is an indigent defendant who is incarcerated. He is not a nonprofit organization. So I get that everyone wants to assist him as best they can, yet I would like to share two terms that is used in the criminal justice system. One is known as the conflict of interest. Number two is professional responsibility within client attorney privileges. How far can attorney, how far can an attorney go in representing their client? 
Okay. So this five page letter was again leaked out and it was done so publicly now. So based on everything that he put on the docket for himself is now being tainted by those haters and naysayers. So they can see all of the weaknesses that represents the sharing of information regarding his case, how he doesn't have a lawyer to represent him. This should have been sent directly to the courts with a notarized name stamped and approved from the detention center in, in Brooklyn. If it was done by Robert Sylvester Kelly on his own behalf and he wanted to share this information, then I believe that there would have been something in it stating that that's what he was doing. I am sharing this as a public document for all to see as proof that I have filed this docket. As far as Jennifer Bongean is concerned, there are legal ramifications of taking gifts, donations, char charitable contributions, financial um, gifts, property from a third party client. No, for from a third party for her client. This can create a great conflict of interest. And if she wasn't as forthcoming and how to took it, maybe the prosecution would have been able to use that to throw her off of his case. This can create a great conflict of interest. And I want to read some specific rules regarding conduct for client and professional rules set on safekeeping and property and financial funds when it comes to client attorney privileges. When we know better, we do better family. So let's get right into this. Okay. The American Bar Association created um, rule 1.8 conflict of interest, current clients, specific rules and comment. Business transactions between client and lawyer. A lawyer's legal skill and training together with the relationship of trust and confidence between lawyer and client create the possibility of overreaching when the lawyer participates in a business property in, in a business property or financial transaction with a client or a third party for their client. For example, a loan, sales transactions, debts, um, lawyer investments must be met even when the transaction is not closely related to the subject matter of the representation. As when a lawyer drafting something for a client learns that the client needs something for unrelated um, expenses and offers to make a loan to the client, the rule applies to lawyers engaged in the sale of goods or services related to the practice of law. For example, title insurance, investment services, existing clients of lawyers, legal practices. We can see rule 5.7 of the American Bar Association also applies to lawyers purchasing property from the states they represent. It does not apply to ordinary fee arrangements between the client and the lawyer. So yes, the client and the lawyer have their, um, relationship building as long as the lawyer makes it forthcoming. Um, now, in, in addition, the rule does not apply to standard commercial transactions between the lawyer and the client for products or services that the client generally markets to others. For example, music, <laughs> okay, royalty, banking or brokering, medical services, products, manufacturing, utility services. See, a lawyer has to be non-biased and if they're able to be paid off, that's called fraud. That's called, um, 
Oh God, there's another word. If you can think of the word I'm thinking about, please put it in the chat for me. In such transactions, the lawyer has no advantage in dealing with the client. So she's not trying to get paid by individuals who are blessing the situation because they care, because they want to help, because they want to be a part of this to get him out maybe as fast as they possibly can. And I still get it. But if we're not careful, what will happen if we don't know the ramifications and laws for client attorney privileges, then that could be used against the prosecution to en entitle him for new crimes. Okay. Paragraph 2A1 requires that the transaction itself be fair to the client and that its essential terms be communicated to the client. So number one, for Bonjean to do anything relative to supporting and helping Robert Sylvester Kelly in any, any way, shape, form, or fashion, she has to put it on a docket. She has to put it on the record in writing in a manner that can be reasonably understood. The client also must be advised in writing of the desirability of seeking the advice of independent legal counsel and requiring the client be given a reasonable opportunity to obtain such advice. So even advice, even legal advice, like what she wrote in the five page letter that was suggested to report to the Minnesota courts, but to put the actual letter online to prove what we don't have to do that. If it's a motion, then yes, but that's his personal notarized information that is going to support him in his Minnesota trial. If there even is one. So the risk to the client is greatest when the client expects the lawyer to represent the client in the transaction. So now if R. Kelly, which I know he probably did not know this was happening because inside I'm sure he's talking to individuals and that's a conflict of interest to pay his attorney money to do things for him. If that's what was actually being done. I don't know. I, this information gets to me, it's hyped. And all of a sudden they want me to talk about something specific. So I do my research, not just on, um, on what I believe, but I do the research based on what I'm hearing happening out there. And then I link it with the law. That's what I do. The lawyer's role requires that the lawyer must comply not only with the requirements of the paragraph, but also with the requirements of rule one seven under that rule, the lawyer must disclose the risks associated with the lawyer's dual role as both legal advisor and participant in the transaction. So to give, she is the appeals. She is more or less the appeals attorney. That's what she is. She's not the criminal attorney. Can she even practice law in other states? That's the question. Because if she can't, then her hands is are tied. That's what the criminal justice system does in order to make sure that there's no, no derogatory opportunities that's granted to individuals who are clients of lawyers. You know, you have to practice in a certain location because you have to know those laws. Like in order for me to get this information from the American Bar Association, I contacted the number that was on the website. The website asked me what state was I inquiring information on and I told them New York. So they took me to an attorney that brought me into New York, New York law. Okay, so Requirement for full disclosure is satisfied by a written disclosure by the lawyer involved in whatever transaction the client's independent counsel is involved in. Other than that, it could be fraud. It could definitely be fraud. If a lawyer learns that a client intends to purchase and develop several 
uh, pieces of land while he's, you know, incarcerated or whatever, and the purchase of the parcels are in competition with the client or recommended, the role does not prohibit use that do not disadvantage the client. So they're not trying to, the relationship between Bonjean and R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly, is that of making sure that she does not disadvantage her client in any way, shape or form, including third party information, unless the client gives informed consent, except as permitted or required by these rules. And it's rules 1.2D, 1.6 and 1.9C, 3.341B, 8.1 and 8.3. Now gifts to lawyers. Yes, and a, a person can give gifts to a lawyer, but not the, the client can. But when you're talking about third parties and you're talking about individuals, you can taint the, the, mental psychological aspects of the case because now you're going to demand that she does this and she does that because the person with the money is the one that controls the situation so that's something that i wanted to put out there um it may be voidable by the client under the doctrine of undue influence we can't influence the attorney, which treats client gifts as presumptively fraudulent in any event due to concerns about overreaching. There we go, going over and beyond and doing more than what we should um, and imposing on the client's freedoms. A lawyer may not suggest that a substantial gift be made to to the lawyer or for the lawyer's benefit, except where the lawyer is related to the client as set forth in paragraph C. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into the relationship of the um, relation, how the lawyer has to be related, but but the rules, the rule does not prohibit a lawyer from seeking to have the lawyer or a partner or associate of the lawyer named as the executor of the client's estate or to another potential lucrative fiduciary position. So yes, if someone would put someone else in charge of the fiduciary um, spending, so then that way it stays independently professional in um, the judgment and advising the client concerning the choice of the executor and how that information is going to provide liter uh, financial assistance. Okay, because a lawyer may not subsidize lawsuits or administrative proceedings brought on behalf of their clients. So they can't get money to do the ruling or, or do more motions or file this or do this a certain way. Um, because to do so would encourage clients to pursue lawsuits that might not otherwise be brought. And because such assistance gives lawyers too great of a financial stake in the litigation. These dangers do not warrant a prohibitation on a lawyer lending a client court costs and litigation expenses, including the expenses of medical examination and costs. Now we're talking civilly here, not criminally, because the advances are virtually indisguisable from contingent fees. We got to remember, Robert Sylvester Kelly is a ward of the state. He has many, many charges against him and vouchers that's just waiting to eat him alive with whatever little money that he gets. And so this is why I believe that a lot of people are reaching into their heart and pulling out, you know, gifts. However, if we continue to do that and Bonjean does not do her due diligence in the court system, the prosecution can use that as suppression of evidence. Like, why are you taking funds and money from strangers? Why are you doing that? So I want to go, okay, so financial, the financial assistance paragraph in the American Bar Association can be found under their website and um, financial assistance uh, 10. So if you look up law 10, you'll find that. 
So I'm going to go over here to the other one that I found, and it was the professionalism of the American Bar Association with their clients. So rule 1.8, conflict of interest, current client specific rules. Oh, we did that one. Okay, that was the one I did. Let me go back. Okay, the responsibilities. Rule 1.15, safe, safekeeping property. Now this would be financial property, money. Client lawyer relationships. A, a lawyer should hold property of clients or third parties that is a lawyer's position in connection with the representation separate from the lawyer's own property. Funds should be kept in a separate account maintained in the state where the lawyer's office is situated or elsewhere with the consent of the client or third party. Other property shall be identified as such and appropriately safeguarded. Complete records of such account funds and other property shall be kept by the lawyer and shall be preserved for a period of five years after termination of the representation. B, a lawyer may dis deposit the lawyer's own funds in a client trust account for the sole purpose of paying bank service charges on that account, but only in an uh, amount necessary for that purpose. So these, the, this money has to be accounted for just like as if it was a grant. Okay. As a grantor, you're given rights, you're given this free money, but yet you have to keep receipts. You have to make sure you have your contracts and these individuals are professional and they're going to be able to do what they say that they're going to do with these funds. So a lawyer shall deposit into a client trust account legal fees, expenses to have been paid in advance to be withdrawn by the lawyer only as fees are earned or expenses incurred. So that's what can take place. According to the American Bar Association, Attorney Bonjean can definitely, you know, um, hold his money and sub submit it. Um, but then he has all the different uh, lawsuits out there. So I don't know if any of that money can be put into any private funding other than community property, like public property. I don't know. Upon receiving funds or other property in which a client or third person has an interest, a lawyer shall promptly notify the client or third person, except as stated in this rule or otherwise permitted by law or by agreement with the client, a lawyer shall promptly deliver to the client or third person any funds or other property that the client or third person is entitled to receive and upon request by the client or third person shall promptly render a full accounting regarding such property. When in the course of representation, a lawyer is in possession of property in which two or more persons, one of whom may be the lawyer claim interest, the property shall be kept separate by the lawyer until the dispute is resolved. The lawyer shall promptly distribute all portions of the property as to which the interests are not in dispute. So see, she can't do much with that money because she's gridlocked. She's going to have to report that. And when you put something like that on the docket, that gives way for prosecution to say, mm, she's being bought to do what she's doing. So now she has a different interest because the interest is not about um, truly protecting and serving her client. It's about what investment, you know, the person who's paying desires her to do. And if she can't do it, so now there's a conflict of interest. If I let you, there's a movie um, that truly depicts this situation where an attorney client privilege was violated and it's called, um, oh man, I can't remember the movie, but I'll put it in the comment box. Um, whenever I can remember, but the client attorney privilege is very privileged information, but in order for the information to be submitted respectfully, and jointly to understand. So the judge reads this, the prosecution reads this, everybody knows what's going on. You know, like I said, in that letter, that five page letter, 
I'm so grateful to the person who put that out. I understand why you put it out because you're trying to get people to understand what's going on in this case. And that's great. Keep the information coming. However, if we could have just literally talked about the docket, the, the document and shared what, what our final conclusions were on it, I really don't believe that the devil needs to know every move that Robert Sylvester Kelly is about to make. This is the very thing that the sisters were talking about in the, um, in the segment three or four videos ago, where they're saying that, you know, his paperwork was considered as a threat and was taken like property of some type of weapon. That's exactly what it, what happens when we put this information out there. So Robert Sylvester Kelly at this time, again, does not have the opportunity to protect himself and what moves he's going to try to make for himself because everything is so public. Is this fair? Is this fair in America that your constitutional rights are being violated once again to the point where, you know, there should have been a notarized that's why I don't believe that's a true letter. It may be, it may not be, but you should have a notarized stamp on that. And when you make the copy of that, the notarization should actually show that stamp of approval on there. So they know when it was docketed, they know when it was put on the books. So sometimes we can't listen. What we see, Will Smith said it. Um, what you thought you seen, you, you did not see. What you thought you heard, you really didn't hear. What you thought you saw, you didn't see. So there are things that you need to be very mindful of when it comes to the way that you want to digest the information of Robert Sylvester Kelly. Who you choose to listen to is your choice. It is your choice. However, we have to make a conscious, aware choice of what we're going to follow. This is the end, the, the times of the world where it's a new beginning of technology and everybody has the freedom of speech to say and do whatever. But when it all boils down to it, do we really have the freedoms to say and do whatever we want to taint and distract and to, you know, communal people in one area? You know, there's a lot of narcissism, narcissism going around. So we got to be careful and, and hold in abeyance what we're going to do. So you have the power. What I'm saying to you as subscribers on my channel, you have the power to say, I don't believe what you're saying right here. You speak your voice. You speak your truth. You are not part of the, there, see, there's the, the shepherd and the sheep. We've already gone through this. There's been an awakening of conscious awareness. So you be careful who you follow because there was a time back in the seventies, a pastor had a congregation that followed him and they all drank their poison together and died together. So we ain't about that. We're about independent thinking. We're about conscious awareness. We're about believing what we know our truth is, that's where we are. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to the R. Kelly Appeal um, channel. We thank you. And I just wanted to get on to say this. I'm going to leave about 10 minutes of airtime in the chat so we can text what our ending feelings are. And please, you know, let's keep it as positive and focused and geared towards seeing that great day when our brother Sylvester, Robert Sylvester Kelly is home doing his thing, living his best life, singing to us what was going on in there and being able to really, really grow into his mature state. See, see, they wanted to keep him in that, that mentality of that young sexual icon. But now he's matured. He's moved into maturity. And there's a difference. There's going to be a whole different style to R. Kelly. You know? 
So, yeah. So, okay. God bless you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.